They possess a wild beauty that's majestic, even hypnotic. They are deadly, but also endangered. That's just part of what makes Siberian tigers so fascinating. You're about to see them in ways you probably never have before. Russians have a deep reverence for these magnificent creatures. Our Moscow correspondent, Chris Brown, had a chance to see, close up, the country's efforts to let them thrive once more. He filed this dispatch from Vladivostok. He is one of nature's greatest and most beautiful predators. The Siberian tiger is the largest of the tiger species whose thick fur allows it to survive in the world's coldest climates. He doesn't even notice our camera as he senses vulnerable prey is near. His killer instincts take over as he stalks and then pounces. In the blink of an eye, the violent attack is over. We're actually watching this go down from a safe spot at a safari park. And this is arguably Russia's most famous tiger. His name is Amur. Tiger Amur is full of respect. He has been in April for seven years. Tiger is a beautiful tiger. Dmitry Mezentev is the director here. And Timur, the goat. You might remember him more from this video. A few years back, he became a global celebrity by befriending a goat named Timur that was supposed to be his dinner. Amur may have been born in captivity, but his prominence transcends his confined space. He's emerged as a symbol of hope for an entire species at risk. It's incredible how well Siberian tigers blend in with their surroundings. They're notoriously difficult to spot in the wild, which is why you have to come to some place like this to see them. This whole area around Vladivostok and the far east of Russia is Siberian tiger territory. They were once some of the most endangered animals on Earth. From just a few dozen animals in the mid 20th century, there were 490 Siberian tigers as of 2018. <laughs> That's still not a lot, so when people see a tiger, it's a big deal. Leaping across a highway, or here, trying to blend in like a tree. When Russian conservationists called us to say we had a chance to film a tiger in the wild and to meet a moor, we hopped on a plane and headed to the city of Vladivostok. It's obvious once you get here just how revered tigers are. There are statues and monuments everywhere. Our destination was a one-of-a-kind tiger rehabilitation center. And the tiger we came to see was Tikhan, a 13-year-old male. Over Christmas, he got into trouble with some villagers by eating their pets. After he was tranquilized, scientists realized Tikhan had a problem with his teeth. So they cleaned and repaired his damaged fangs. Tiger biologist Sergei Aramilev said Tikhan seemed to be ready to be released back into the wild. Just as we arrived, Tikhan died. So instead of witnessing his freedom, the Russian authorities gave us unprecedented access to observe their scientific teams as they performed his autopsy. Every time a tiger dies, there has to be an investigation to determine the cause of death, to know if something illegal, such as poaching, was responsible. They look for gunshot wounds, stab marks, or signs of poisoning. And later, they'll look at his organs to understand if perhaps his diet or food sources were the problem. It all helps authorities understand the stresses the tiger population faces. They cleaned his fur and measured him from tail to toe before hoisting him up 
to see his weight when he died. So they just weighed Tihan and they know he was about 140 or so kilograms at his death and that's pretty light. Uh, they think he should have been upward around 200 or so kilograms for a 13 year old uh, male tiger. They're not sure why he was so, uh, he, he wasn't heavy. Um, obviously he had had dental work, he had trouble eating before, so that could be one possibility, but there's obviously a lot more going on here. Uh, and that's what this, um, this necropsy is hopefully going to give some answers to. It's sad to see such a great beast at the end of its life, especially knowing how fragile the population remains. But Aramilev says Tihan did his part. Единственный, наверное, момент то, что тигр прожил достаточно длительную жизнь, да, и он успел достаточно много сделать. The final cause of death, we were told later, dehydration and exhaustion. Tihan basically died of natural causes. At the rehab center, hopefully, a more positive story is about to unfold. These two cubs, Elena and Pavlik, were rescued after their mother had to be relocated because she ate six dogs in a Russian village. But rather than sending the cubs to zoos and a life of captivity, Viktor Kuzmenko, who runs the rehab center, is training them to hunt and to fend for themselves so they can be reintroduced into the wild. So the no humans rule is strictly enforced. We could only watch them on these monitors. And even when Vladimir Putin visited in 2014, Russia's president had to keep his distance too. The Kremlin helps fund this center, as well as many of the other tiger conservation measures. The young tigers are taught to hunt using wild animals. Usually a deer is released into the pen, and the tigers chase it down and finish it off with a bite to the neck. In the past five years, this center has rehabilitated and released seven tigers. Other measures such as monitoring have helped too. Cameras such as this one capture extraordinary sights, such as four tiger cubs playing all day. There are more than 800 such cameras all over Russia's Far East. But for all the successes, the greatest threat faced by tigers remains people who want to kill them for their furs and body parts. Sergei Aramilev, the biologist, has a freezer full of seized illegal trophies he shows us. A headshot, yes. A headshot, right. This was the first bullet wound. They were in the head. The market for such items, he says, is almost all in China, where tiger parts fetch a high price. A crackdown, though, by Russia's government on poaching does seem to be working. In 2010, up to 70 tigers a year were killed by poachers. Now the number is closer to 15 to 20. Yeah. That's thanks in part to conservation officers such as Andrei Zakharov and his team. <laughs> He leads one of 14 dedicated anti-poaching teams. They ride in armored personnel carriers, often camping for days at a time. We spent one day with them. The other part of his job is dealing with those angry villagers who lose their pets to tigers. And there are lots of those stories on Russian TV. 
тигр схватил собаку мою маленькую с конурой прямо. While her dog was killed, this woman was luckier. Тигр его подцепил ее лапой попытался вытащить. There was lots of blood from the lucky escape. So, to stop people from shooting problem tigers, which is illegal, Zakharov and his crew try to calm things down and hand out compensation. Человек, мы мы пришли в его дом. Да, есть такие случаи, что он нападает на скотину, нападает, нападает на коров, нападает на лошадей, нападает на собак, забирает собак. Но, но, если у человека все нормально с документами, все нормально, но государство компенсирует эти затраты. Siberian tigers are still listed as an endangered species. But Sergei Aramilev says after decades of worry, the trajectory is finally looking up. Ну, заходя в лес на Дальнем Востоке, ты ощущаешь такое ощущение сказки, да, чего-то неизведанного, потому что там живет хозяин этой тайги, тигр. Он всегда присутствует незримо, следы, энергетика. И с учетом того, что этот зверь вызывает уважение и гордость, я считаю, что он должен жить рядом с нами. The official conservation target is to have a population of 700 wild adult Siberian tigers and cubs in four years' time. And authorities believe they'll get there. Chris Brown, CBC News, near Vladivostok, Russia. There is more on this story on our Instagram page, exclusive pictures and video, as well as a short essay by Chris that takes you behind the scenes of his reporting. Check it out and follow us at CBC The National.